Okay, so today I am going to be programming in machine language. Um, two programs we're going to write. First program is going to be an infinite loop. Uh, infinite because there is no terminating condition. Nothing that says, hey, if you meet this condition, stop. Since there is no terminating condition, the program continues infinitely. Um, as I'm talking, we should pay attention to the code. You can even pause this video. It helps you to really understand how a, a computer processes information. So, um, again, the first one is going to be an infinite loop that does not stop, no terminating condition. So now with this code, I want you to notice a couple things first right off the bat. Um, I have wrote load R1, OX01. So R is standing for register. So what we're stating is in the register 1 location, uh, we should put a value of hexadecimal 01. So the next step, we're um, adding the values of register 1 and register 2 and then placing them in R3. So now we've got a uh, value in R3. And we're going to store the value in R3, R3, I'm sorry, into the memory slot known as hexadecimal value 00, zero very first slot. So uh, we took and we gave a value of 1 to the first register, or register R1 would actually be the second register. We then added R1 and R2, placed that value in R3 within the CPU register, and then transfer that value directly into memory. We're now going to load R2 with the value that has been stored in, in a um, register memory slot, the very first one, hexadecimal 00. So basically, we've created our counter. So we do an addition, we then take the value of that addition, we store it in the third slot. Um, that third slot is put over to memory, and then the second slot, which is used in our addition, is then going to pull from that memory. So we're going to create a loop. Now the loop um, is going to be defined by the word label, simple, simply label. Again, machine language, reduced instruction sets, um, this is a simulator. We are limited to what we can do. So that's basically saying jump to label. It's like back in the days when you wrote basic. 10, go to 20. 20, um, uh, uh, output hello world. 30, go to 10, which would just repeat hello world for an infinite amount of times until you crash the program. So now, Another thing to consider with this, so this program actually does not continue to count. It only has a limited number of registers, 256 or 255 from computer science math to be exact. Uh, that said, it does not count beyond that. It will not count beyond that. If we were able to count beyond that and we set this infinite loop to reach a really high number, then the computer, the program would just crash. It would just. We're going to add uh, this code that I've written in Notepad, and we're going to go over and just slap it into the uh, assembler. And this is a, a simulator, so this is not. I'm not actually hard coding into the CPU. Um, all I'm doing is, is emulating what would happen on the very right side of the screen. You're going to see um, a box that shows what's actually happening, where you see the R0, R1, R2, those are the registers. So left, we have uh, the actual memory, 256 bytes of memory. Woo, we're doing, that's just phenomenal. 256 bytes is all we have. So, um, you can see we're going to step through a couple times. I can show you as I highlight each line of code what happens and where. Get you a better understanding. Um, 
we have register using registers R2 and R3 um, and uh, using memory slot the very first one which is hexadecimal value 00. zero. If I left my computer and I didn't have a screensaver set or not, I didn't go to sleep, um, it would run infinitely as long as that computer could last without any other problems. But the code itself has nothing to terminate, nothing to say, hey, stop. Hey, this is a... Uh Let me remove all these uh, comments out of here so you can see a little bit more. Uh, you just see the code itself. Again, no terminating condition. With the jump label, it just loops between those lines of code. First line loads a value of 1, and then we do an addition loop that continues, continues, continues infinitely. So now, what's our terminating condition? Well, we're going to load a value of 255 hexadecimal FF into the very last register. And we're going to use that value to compare it to the value that's within um, the very first register on the CPU. The register, first re register on the CPU is also going to load the value that was... Um, used for the addition. So, you know, we take R1, R2, we put that value in R3, we then store it in memory, and it loops. So, before the jump label, we set a condition, a terminating condition. So, if um, this program, where if RF, the value in RF equals RO, then we are going to go to uh, hexadecimal value, I'm sorry, which is the address, the hexadecimal app is the last slot in the memory. Also notice uh, the um, semicolon throughout this code. For those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with code, semicolon just basically allows you to comment the code so you can place your comments. So say, for example, you're writing code, you really get into it, put the code down for a while, you've written hundreds, thousands of lines, um, 
Two years later, you come back to the code like, what the heck is this mess? If your naming scheme was shaky, if, um, you know, you didn't do things right and, and you did not comment your code, you're not going to necessarily know what does what. It's going to take you a bit more time to figure things out. Commenting the code allows you to know, you know, help you to figure out exactly where it's at. And there's actually um, software standards for how to comment. So now let's run this code. So first thing we're going to do, um, again, we're going to step it, step through it, step by step. Do, do, do. Cop throw it in there. This is the assembler. So I've got to assemble it first. Compiles it is what that means. It is a compiled as opposed to interpreted. Click on step. You see for step we load the value 01 um, into slot 01. You can see there it is. Now we load the very last register the value of FF for 255. Okay, now we um, do an addition set, and you can see register 3 has a value. So now we're going to store that value over in 01. So now we have th this total. So now we are then uh, loading R2 with the value stored in register 00. So is this condition met? Does... Um, RF equal R0. No. Since it does not, it has, this, has the value of register RF, or is the value of register RF equivalent to RO? Excuse me here, I messed up on my typing a little bit. Better way to word this. Now, I know it's kind of redundant. Some people might say it's redundant to type a notepad and at the same time um, talk, but I think it gives a little bit more, uh, um, you can understand a little bit better. Some people are visual learners. Others do better by, by ear. Some people do better by, by actually hands-on. So if there's anybody out there that would like to have copy this program. This program is freeware. I have no problem with giving you a link to how to, where to download it. Um, so yeah, so now we've stepped through it. You can see how it works. Now we're going to run it. Now again, it, it'll go to the one portion where it says, uh, where we say jump EQ. So we're, we're saying jump equal. If it's equal, we're going to jump here. Jump to the register value, the location in, in the register. So it runs, and it met that condition. If you notice, uh, the very top register, R0, is equal to the last register, RF. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback? Um, would you like to hire me? Give me a call. I'm available for freelance work. I can be reached at 330-802-0285. As well, I am online, www.mikestratton.net. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.